What did you like about Miss Heard when you first started your romantic relationship? She she seemed to be. She seemed to be the. Um, she, she seemed to be the perfect. A partner, in, in a sense, f in my head, for me, because she, as I said, she, she was, she seemed to be very knowledgeable about old, obscure blues music that I listened to and really liked. Um, she was literate. She was uh, sweet, funny, nice. All those things, you know. Um, and, and, and she was, and from the beginning of our relationship at that time, for a good year, a year and a half, um, she was, uh, she was wonderful. And, and then things just started to uh, change or things started to reveal themselves. That's, I think, is a better way to put it. How would you describe your interactions with Ms. Hurd when you worked together on The Rum Diary? Um, initially, well, yeah, no, mostly very, very, very few interactions. Um, I remember there was a time, I wasn't working that day, but I was producing, you know, one of the producers of the film, <clears throat> and um, it was a scene from the book that that was it was a it was a it was a scene where Ms. Hurd's character was in a nightclub, and w were amongst um, the locals, and she's very drunk, and everybody's very drunk, and she ends up dancing with a few of the local, like one of the local guys and stuff, and then the other local guys start to sort of close in on her. In the book and in the screenplay as it was written, there was a, a, she, there was a, required, a, a requirement for nudity um, for the part. And uh, I was on set the day that they were shooting that. And as I, as I was watching the crowd coming in on her, I realized, you know what? Because I would check on Ms. Hurd and say, are you all right? Are you sure you're okay? Because this is, you know, she was like, no, no, I'm fine, fine, fine. But I realized that with the crowd surging in towards her, that we didn't have to do, we wouldn't have to do the nudity. Because if she, if she took, took her shirt off and she had uh, a red bra on um, and a skirt, then if she had a red bra in her hand, when the crowd surged in on her, all she had to do was lift the red bra up out of the crowd and there's no nudity, but it's certainly implied because then she disappears for the character disappears for a few days and um, and she's quite a wreck when she comes back because bad things have happened to her. So I, I remember telling Ms. Hurd, "Hey, you don't you don't have to." Uh, you don't have to take your clothes off. You don't have to take your top off. You don't have to, everything's cool. Um, and she was appreciative. Um, and, uh, but, but, but other than that, we didn't really um, have much interaction until, um, until there was a, um, a scene where I, I was t I'm, I'm taking a shower and then she comes into the room and she walks 
opens the shower and we kiss. And uh, that moment was um, it was um, yeah it it, it, it was a, it was it, it, it felt like something um, it felt like something that I shouldn't be feeling because she had her wife um, and even though it was a scene and, and, and she had her wife and, and I had Vanessa and kitties and um, yeah. When would you say your romantic relationship with Miss Hurt actually began, if, if not in that moment? Well, I think there was something in the kiss in the shower that was very um, real. Um, so that day after work, my sir uh, had come to my trailer and I was, uh, Uh, I was I was uh, listen, I was just sitting there listening to uh, actually old blues stuff, and um, we had a glass of wine and um, and 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 we kissed. Um, and at that point, we were the, my trailer was the only trailer in the parking lot. Um, she had a mind to stay in the trailer there for a while with me, and I uh, didn't think that was a very good idea on any level, especially since there were about nine Teamsters waiting to move the trailer. Um, and then that was that until to till whenever the uh, we did the first day of the press junket uh, for the rum diary in Los Angeles uh, two years later and um, she had she had broken up I believe with her wife and my uh, for lack of a, well, my wife, uh, we weren't married, married, but she was, of course, my wife, Vanessa. Um, had, we, we had had uh, some not so great um, situations, you know. Um, she wanted, she needed, she needed, she was stuck in America. <laughs> She wanted to go back to France. She wanted to have her life back. She's a no. She's a well-known singer there, she, um, and that's not long out. Yeah, right, right around then is when <clears throat> Miss Heard and I started to uh, see each other here and there occasionally. Um, between the end of the filming of the Rum Diary and the the press junket, did you and Miss Heard communicate at any time? in between? I, I don't remember. I remember that there was a, a, there was a white dress that she was really, she really was infatuated with, that she really loved this dress that she wore in the film. And uh, so I, I went to Colleen Atwood, the costume designer, and to Bruce, and I said, do you think we can snag this this white dress and send it to uh, to Amber, uh, you know, after she'd wrapped? Because she loved the, she loved the thing. Um, I remember talking to her, I think, then, but a brief
briefly, briefly. <laughs>